it's been a kind of a quiet day today. I hope you're having a good weekend. So yeah, um, I didn't see this until today until I was putting this, uh, you know, I'm putting this model together and I'm, I'm going to incorporate AMC as well because I feel, you know, it's very relevant to the overall market uh, mechanics this year that we've seen. Uh, now, what's interesting is that when I was looking at the shares outstanding, and yes, I'm using Fintel because this is one of the easier and reliable uh, sources of information from Fintel because they get it directly from the NYSC, and it's one of the only things they get from the NYSC that, that they disclose. So, yeah, official NYSC data, and it says right here, source short interest provided by NYSC. That's like the only thing <laughs> where they do this. So that's why I'm using it for convenience sake. This is AMC. Look at this shit. So on the 15th of January, we had 81.11% short interest of the float, 27.19% 20, uh, of the outstanding. But this is what's important, right? The float, what's freely tradable between retail. And uh, yeah, so then it goes down a little bit on the 29th, and then of course goes up on the 12th. And then by the 26th, when we have that run up on the 24th, Look, we're at 100 points, like over. We're over 100%. This is like GameStop type shit right here. At the same time that GameStop goes off. So what happens? How do they do? How do they fight this? They Look at the float. The float goes from 55 million to 225 million. Right when it hits 100%? Uh, what? Had they not have done that? Look at this shit. Look, if they, if they would not have done that, by May, we, we would have been talking nearly 200% almost of the float. Why was this done? That's what I want to know. What In what universe would, does this make sense? Like I get issuing shares, but that many? I mean, because from right here, they doubled their shares outstanding in early uh, July. And then a month later, they increased the float by 400% and then doubled the outstanding shares again, uh, you know, a little bit less. But yeah, I mean, that's crazy, right? When you get to 100% short interest, something uh, smells bad about this decision. I'm just saying. I don't see any logical reason why you do that. Like issuing shares is fine, but I mean that's a, that's that's a four hundred percent. I mean, good God! So I don't know. We get the update on August, I think, on the twenty fourth. So we will see. But I I cannot believe I just now discovered this, or like I don't know if anyone else knew about it, but that's a huge deal. You you get to like we had them. <laughs> We had the, like all of our holding that we've done that we accomplished in February. For those of you that were here in February, like I was in AMC when we were sitting there buying at fucking five dollars and six dollars and the eight hundred one, all that fun shit. And then I didn't. I cannot believe I didn't notice that they raised the float by that much. So I don't know. I just wanted to point that out because. That's, I mean, we would have been over 200% by now. And they could have issued shares too, and it would have been no problem. So, yep, interesting shit. And then let's let's look at GME just for transparency's sake, just to, you know, compare. Because a GameStop issued shares just fine. They issued shares and, you know, they have cash on hand now. They paid off all their debt. But let's look at the shares outstanding situation. Yeah, see, Fintel provides their own daily short interest, which is bullshit, in my opinion. That's why I on, only go off the official NYSC data, and I'm only using Fintel because it has the source listed. So it's just for convenience because you have everything right here. So this is GameStop. So as you can see, shares outstanding from the time January and now has only gone up 
two million, but they've paid off all their debt and they have a shit ton of cash on hand. They have two fulfillment centers coming now. We were at 127 in early Jan. 129 came. You know, we've been going down basically ever since. But that's why I'm building this model because you look at this going down and everything else is going up. <laughs> so it's just interesting stuff, man. I mean, days to cover spikes. Like, so the days to cover is higher than it was in January at 127%. And, uh, we're sitting here at 14% with only 2 million more shares outstanding. So interesting stuff. Why did they, I mean, I just don't get the approach that was taken by AMC. That would, that's a ridiculous, that's like to help wall street out. Like, here you go. Here's a way out. So it is what it is. I really like the shares outstanding a little bit more when it was at 69, but Hey, it's all good. Now I will say that this float percentage is incorrect. Because the float is 44.44 million, as we all know, by the proxy statement. Wow, I typed in proxy instead of CAC. I'm an idiot. Let's see here. So 7664869 divided by 44. Oh, wow. Is that right? No, okay. So it's just slightly off. So it's it's actually 17.3% uh, of the float. And yeah, <laughs> here we go. So yeah, if anyone has the reason why they anyone would have done that, I mean, why that makes sense for AMC to do that, in my perspective, you don't you don't need to do it that way to make money. Clearly seen here. Um, yeah, sounds sounds like. Uh, we had them. I mean, we did. We, we had 100%. We could have been 200 by now. So y'all have a good evening and enjoy the rest of your weekend.